when you looked up at the sky, could you actually see the stars and the solar corona in spite of the glare? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. Uh, I don't recall during the period of time that we were photographing the sonar curl or what, uh, what stars we could see. I don't remember seeing any. What's been the most surprising, the most unexpected thing when you actually got there? Uh, that's a great question. The most unexpected thing, I think, was um, the blackness of space, because we always talk about seeing the view of planet Earth and how beautiful it is, and so you, you've come to expect that. But what people don't mention that much is just when you look the opposite direction uh, and you see how dark space is. I mean, it's the black is black, and you realize just how small the Earth is in that blackness, and that was a real surprise to me. stars and I see you know so many stars and planets and and know that you know we have a place in the universe and it's in, in part of our job is to explore that place whilst in space have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, because yeah, you time. can see yeah, because yeah. you can see the stars. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. Yeah. It's it's not which a is black a cool void. Thing. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. Yeah, you can, and there's more than stars. You can see planets. You can right. see moons. You you see the ga the gas. Uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky yeah, Way galaxy. Yeah, yeah, you see the Magellanic clouds. Magellanic, see, I, was, yeah. I just wanted the well, Magellan clouds. Well, there's a large clouds. one and a small one, right? Yeah. And, and then you can see uh, the zodiacal light. Whoa. But could you tell us something about what the sky actually looks like from the moon, the sun, the earth, the stars, if any, and so on? The sky is uh, a deep black uh, when viewed from the moon as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the earth and the moon. Uh, the sky is almost white with with the light of the universe, with the uncountable number of stars. But it, it has a lot of variation to it, even just with the naked eye, when we're in the shade of the earth, so we can really see it. Um, you can see the whole dark sections where, where there's dark matter or, or dust or whatever it is that's between us and the rest of the universe. You can see the gradations of it, like looking into the deepest ocean. What are the stars like in space? Like, are they just brighter than on Earth, or how, how would you describe it? The, they're 
brighter, but they're different. Now, a lot of things different about it. One, you don't have the atmospheric distortion, so they don't twinkle, right? So you see lots of points, and you see lots of points, and that literally millions of them. Uh, you know, there's you know, the thing about Carl Sagan, billions and billions of stars. There really are billions and billions of stars, and you can see them. In fact, they're so numerous, it's very <laughs> difficult to pick out the constellations you and I see here on the ground. There. And then when you look the other way, it's the whole universe, and the blackness is is a palpable blackness. It's not just dark; it's it's uh, forever. And and the it uh, uh, the guy named Paul Fiel designed our mission patch, and he's you know had a really nice design. And he said, "What color do you want for the background?" And we said, "Black," but really black. <laughs> and he said, "What do you mean really black?" <laughs> I said, well, I don't know, black as you can make it. So he hit the black as you can make one. We went, well, that's black, but it's it's not the same as um, as the the endlessness of the universe. You don't see stars in the daytime on Earth, not because they're not there, but because the atmosphere is aglow with scattered light from the sun. If you take away the atmosphere, the sun will still be there, but the sky goes dark. That's what the folks get when they go to the edge of the atmosphere, and they're calling that the edge of space. But when you get to the edge of the atmosphere, the atmosphere is no longer between you and the rest of the universe, and the stars reveal themselves just as they would at night. Since the moon has no atmosphere, then a daytime picture if you're there in the daytime of the moon, you see a full night, night sky of stars, mm -hmm. even with the sun in the sky as well. In like, just hanging there in a vast sea of darkness and the most frightening darkness that you could ever imagine. Uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight so you can't see any stars just like here on Earth. Just the inherent beauty of it, the velvet, bottomless bucket of the universe. The sky, of course, was, uh, was black, but it uh, had sort of a velvet sheen to it. The biggest visual surprise was just how black the sky was. <laughs> You have a brilliant sun, brighter than any sun you normally would see even here in New Mexico. Uh, you have uh, these, uh, these extraordinarily high mountains. We were in a valley deeper than the Grand Canyon. But then you have this black sky, a sky blacker than black, as the old Vit Viticon expression used to be. I've often tried to explain the difference between darkness, when you turn out the lights and it's dark in here, or blackness. Blackness is the endlessness of it all. It's hard to comprehend. Mm -hmm. 